Hey everybody, Pat here from West Corners Custom Cycles. Welcome back to the Underground Garage. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank you for all the likes and subscriptions and comments. Keep them coming. Let me know what you think about the content we're putting out. Hope you like it. Even if you don't like it, let me know. That way I know to change it. Um, want to tell everybody if you're just tuning in, hit that like, that subscribe button. Check out all my other videos on the channel. As always, be good to each other, be kind. Keep the shiny side up and live life behind bars. Catch you on the flip side. Peace. From West Corners Custom Cycles again. Welcome back to the Underground Garage. Um, I'm going to do a couple of video series here. Uh, first video series I'm going to do, basically I want to show everybody out there that you don't need to spend twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to have yourself a cool custom bike. And something you can go out, ride around, be proud of being seen on, take to a show if you want, take to the bar and have everybody ooh and ah at, and it's not gonna cost you that much money. Maybe a couple of grand. Buy a decent bike, something cheap that runs, don't get something that doesn't run. Buy something that runs that needs a lot of cosmetic work. It's a lot easier than trying to monkey around and figure out what the heck's going on and why it's not running. Anyway, I picked up a couple of bikes um, two of them are Yamaha Viragos, like the one in front of me. One of them is this 1975 Harley-Davidson Sportster. Uh, I'm going to do a video series on the Sportster and the Virago in front of us. Uh, I'm going to bob them out, make them look cool. I'm going to take you through, show you everything that I'm going to take off of them. Some things are missing, that's why I got them cheap. But uh, they do both start and run, so that was a big plus. Uh, but uh, the first bike we're going to do here, this is a 1994 Yamaha Virago. I bought it for $600. It starts and runs. It was missing the title. I got a girl working on that now. So I'll have some money invested in that. Uh, when I'm done with this video series, I'm going to show you before and after pictures of everything. I'm also going to take you through and give you a breakdown on what I spent for buying the, the motorcycles themselves and any parts that I might be putting into them. Um, I... Do a lot of motorcycle stuff so i got a lot of parts here but either way i'll even if it's parts i have i'll i'll figure out what i paid for them and uh we'll give you a breakdown you can see that it, it's maybe going to be a couple of thousand dollars beginning to end that's with purchase price of the bike and uh the parts you're going to put into it and it's going to come out pretty cool in the end you'd be surprised okay well i've been wanting to make this video for a while because i got to get this tank off of here uh, I got to get it drained and out to my body guy. It's got a couple of dents in it that I want to take care of. I'm also going to paint it uh, original 1985 Virago 1000 colors, the two-tone brown. I've already got the paint, so we're all set with that. Uh, I'm going to do a walk around this bike right now and show you some of the things that are missing, some of the things we're going to do with it, and some of the things we're going to eliminate that are on it. Hang on a second. Let me get my, my phone here. Okay. This is the bike, I'll give you a rundown on it. Like I told you, there's a big old crease in the tank. I gotta pull that off, get that taken care of. We're gonna eliminate the front fender. We're gonna eliminate these high risers on it, get rid of the handlebars, blinkers, mirrors, engine guards. I'm going down the bike. You can see right here there's an supposed to be a big chrome air filter in here. That's missing. Over here we have a uh, side cover missing. That's missing on both sides. Going to eliminate this exhaust down here, put straight pipes on it. Uh, seats getting eliminated, rear fenders getting eliminated, rear blinkers, book rack, backrest, fender struts. Um, all that's getting eliminated. Tail light. Debating whether I'm going to go with the uh, hard tail on it or keep these shocks. If I go hard tail, I'm going to put a spring key, uh, spring kit on the solo seat. And if I keep the shocks, then I'll probably just put the uh, the solo seat on, slam it right down on the frame. Take a walk around the other side of this. <clears throat> Sorry for the glare. Okay, other side of the bike, like I said, 
missing the side cover here there's the evap box here that all appears to be okay there's a big chrome cover that goes over it i'm gonna have to get that um you know told you everything we're gonna eliminate going with a solo seat so these rear foot pegs will probably get eliminated too and uh that's about it gives you a rundown on what we're gonna tear off of it and once i get her tore down I'll come back and we'll start the video with it all torn down. I'll take you through everything we're going to do to it. And uh, step by step show you everything we do and before and after. Okay. Talk to you when this is all torn down. Okay, everybody. Hey, here from West Corners Custom Cycles again. Welcome back to the Underground Garage. I told you we'd come back once I got this Farago all tore down to the... Uh, Basically the frame tires front end and a motor on it. Um, I told you in the, the last part of the video everything we were going to take off to and everything we were going to do to it. Um, now that I got it all ripped down I wanted to show you where we're at, what I'm uh, about to do to it. And like I said I'll take you through step by step everything we got to do. Um, right now I'm working out what I'm going to do with the seat. Um, I think right now I'm going to put on some risers for the handlebars, get the handlebars on it, I'll get the seat down. I decided I'm going to go with a passenger seat on it and see how that looks. If I'm not happy with it, I'm just going to cut it off, cut off the frame and make it a bobber and uh, uh, just leave the solo seat on it with a spring kit. But right this moment, that's where we're at. I got a shorty pair of risers or maybe an inch, inch and a half. Uh, I got a 16 pair, uh, 16 inch pair of ape hangers. This is the plate that's going for the spring seat. These are where the springs hook up. So this is where it hooks up to the bike. <laughs> These bolts will hook it up to there too. But, but the way this is shaped doesn't fit the contour of the frame. So I'm going to have to kick this part down and probably this top part up a little. And I'm also probably going to have to take this flat part and curve it a little. Uh, to make it follow this part of the frame right here Okay, once I get it curved and everything fit into that that way it'll hide all the wiring down here And if I ever get caught in the rain, hopefully it'll keep the, the moisture off it Second thing I'm going to do is uh, this piece of uh, steel here that I got hanging out um, I'm going to make that follow the back part of the frame up and then it straightens out and goes back like this um I got two holes drilled in the front of it right now. I'm just lining up. Uh, I'm gonna get a couple more bolts in it, bend it to curve the uh, match the curve of the tire. I'll get the seat put on here, the passenger seat. Um, also gonna wind up doing uh, some sort of sissy bar, so whoever's sitting back there's got something to lean on. I'll take you through that when I get that far. So that's what we're looking at right now. I'm just going to break off, get that going. Once I get that done, I'll come back, show you what I did, take you through step by step and show you. And then uh, uh, I think tomorrow, once we get that done, I think we're going to go ahead and start on lighting. I got new blinkers for it. I got a side mount tail, uh, tail light and license plate mount for it. I got a grill for the front headlight. And they all match, they're all in black, the blinkers and the tail light and the headlight will all have the same grill on it. Uh, tie everything in together. Uh, you can see right now, that's where we're at, putting it back together. Uh, to get it where it is right now, I've got about seven hours into it. It was about five, five and a half tear down. And then it was pretty, uh, it was pretty grimy. So I went out and got some degreaser, some spray cleaner, spent an hour, an hour and a half going through that and uh you know cleaning the whole thing up a little bit to make it look better so we're getting there the uh the rims are probably both going to have to come off to, for me to clean them the way they really need to be cleaned and to get inside the swing arm and inside the uh the lower end of the fork tubes um that's where we're at right now so i'm going to get whacking on this thing and i'll see you again when I got the handlebars, risers, seat, and rear seat on. All right, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Hey everybody, Pat here again from West Corners Custom Cycles. I uh, wanted to take you through, working on the 94 Virago build still. 
decided that I was going to get rid of these foot pegs that are on it. Um, I had ordered a set of floorboards or foot footboards, whatever you want to call them, for uh, my wife's bike. They didn't fit on there. Looks like they're going to fit on this without much modification at all. Really, the only thing I had to do. This is what the floorboard mounts on. This hole in the center here is five sixteenths. I had to drill it out to three eighths in order to accommodate the peg that goes through here and holds the foot peg on. Comes out the other side. There's a cotter pin that goes through it. If it's up and down, it's also got a spring in here. It's spring loaded. We're gonna get rid of that spring because, as you can see. That's got a slot in it where the spring goes in here. This doesn't. And one inch of solid steel is certainly going to be more solid than these two aluminum tabs. They really aren't that thick, as you can see. Big difference. So anyway, <laughs> um, I've already got one of these done, took it apart. The idea of what it's going to look like when you're all said and done. If you decide to ever do this, but bolt onto the bike right here. That's going to stick out the side. Floorboard. Now it's on just like that. Got a hole here where a bolt goes. Bolt goes through here, pinches these together, locks this down good and tight so it don't come off. All mounts to the bike just like that. All right. Give you an idea of what I'm doing here. I told you I was going to take you through and show you everything step by step. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this one apart. Like I said, got a cotter pin. I'm going to take that out, pull this out. Um, on the other one, I had to stick a washer in here. I'm glare on my glasses. I had to stick a washer in here on either side. Take up the slack, had a little little more movement than I wanted. And uh, it locked up right tight as a drum. And this thing is rock solid. It doesn't move anywhere. I mean, it goes up and down like it's supposed to. But So, all that's good. Um, I'm going to get these mounts back on the bike. I'm not going to uh, attach the footboards to them yet. Uh, reason being is I'm waiting on a set of lowered shocks. Once I get them, I can get them on, get the bike down on the ground. I can see where it's actually going to sit, so when I get these floorboards on, I'll know where I got to, where I got to, you know, set them front to back to get it level for when I'm riding down the road and where it'll work good with the uh, the foot controls, the shifter, and the rear brake. Um, so that's it. That's about that. Pretty straightforward. Pretty simple. Wasn't much modification to it. It's going to be a nice addition when I'm going on a, you know, a little longer road trip. You know, it's nice to have have these rather than the foot pegs what's nice too is these are also rubber mounted the mounts so once i get these on here they'll also have a have a little flex and give to them it's gonna be nice i think but uh okay i'm gonna get that done get them on there i will talk to you guys soon i'm waiting for some stuff coming in the mail as soon as that gets here we're gonna do a couple more videos on some other stuff that i'm doing to the bike um I changed uh, direction on a couple of things. I'll show you what I'm talking about when they get here. But uh, till I see you again, be safe, be kind, keep the shiny side up, live life behind bars. Talk to everybody later. Okay, hey everybody, uh, Pat from West Corners Custom Cycles here again. Uh, 94 Virago build, wanted to take you around and show you where I'm at, what I did where I'm up to now, where I'm going. Um, last video, I showed you the uh, footboard mounts that I did. I got the footboard mounts on the bike like I said I was going to. I uh, wanted to put the footboard, I told you I wasn't gonna put the footboards on it, but I wanted to put them on there uh, just to see how they went with the shifter and the brake pedal. And of course, like with any customizing, it doesn't fit right, you gotta modify it. So, um, in a second here, I'm going to get the phone, walk around the bike, show you what I'm doing, show you what I've done. And uh, that's where we're at. Okay, let me get the phone. Okay, everybody. Third time trying to do the walk around video. My phone was running out of space, kept cutting me off. Trying to show you. I got these floorboards mounted on here. You can see where the brake pedal 
is touching the floorboard. It's because the floorboard isn't going all the way on. There's a little gap down here between the mount for the floorboard that it goes on. It's not going all the way to the side. So up here, the mount that goes on the bike, I have to shim it out enough for that floorboard to go on. And then I got to modify the brake pedal so that I get my foot under it and it comes over far enough where I can access it and use it the way I need to when I'm riding the bike. Okay, over here on this side, shifter, same deal. We have, I'm trying to keep this steady for you. You can see right here, floorboards hitting the shifter. Sorry for the glare. The glare's terrible on this, so I had to go get my tablet. But again, it's hitting there, so I gotta shim the mount out so I get the floorboard on. And then as you can see, I can just get my fingers under the shifter. So I obviously need to get that shifter up higher in the air and I'd like it to come out a little farther over the footboard, make it a little more accessible and just having that little nub there. So that's where we're at on the footboards. I'm gonna have to modify the shifter and the brake pedal. Now what we got going on here, I had to make a seat pan right here. And that's just basically a flat piece of metal. It's curved exactly to match the frame. I think you can see if I get down here on the side, we ran it right along the frame. Uh, this bracket here is a bracket I made for the spring seat that's going to go on here. Front of the spring seat is going to mount where the bottom of the tank mounts. I'm going to use that same bolt for both of them. Springs are going to mount on here. Seat will be on top of it, rock up and down. And where these two bolts are here, goes down through both these. And here, I'll take it off so you can see. Covers all the electronics, so nothing gets in there. I'm riding down the road, and if I ever get caught in the rain, hopefully it'll keep water out of there. Didn't like what I was doing with this rear fender thing. Uh, I decided to make a passenger seat and, uh, excuse me, and put a rear fender on there. I did buy a rear fender. It's in the box there came the other day it's damaged and uh, it was the wrong fender so that's going back um, what else do I got going on here uh, decided back here I am gonna go with uh, shocks because there's gonna be a passenger on here if it was a hard tail tail it would be uh, just brutal for the person riding on the back so we're gonna put some uh, ten and a half inch shocks on that and uh, that should work out fine. I'll make some kind of backrest for it. I'm not going to use the stock one. I don't like them. They're too big and bulky. I mean, it looks okay when it's on just a stock Virago. But um, up here on the front, <coughs> excuse me. At one point, I had a set of risers and handlebars on here, but the ones I put on were one inch. Didn't think about it. All the controls are in seven eighths of an inch. The diameter of the hole that goes on the handlebar. So. Two choices. If you want the one inch bars, great. You're going to have to change out all the controls, which is doable, but I'm not going to because, again, this build was about being uh, coming up with a cool looking, you know, bobbed out chopper looking bike and not doing it for much money or a whole lot of time. So, you know, both of those are going to take more money and time, and that's not what this is about. So, anyway. Up here on the front, I put this grill in the front headlight. Uh, I actually had a couple hours into that because this chrome uh, ring that it goes into had a 1 8 inch lip all the way around the inside of it. I had to grind it out so that the grill would slide into it. And the grill had a screw-on ring that went on the back of the grill to hold it into the ring. Well, there's not enough room in there to get the screw on backing in with the headlight and everything. They got everything real tight in there. So if you can see on the side right here, I'll get in closer. <clears throat> right here, these bolts right here, I drilled little holes in the side, went through the chrome ring and the uh, the black grill, and uh, just used the lock nut on the inside. Used a six by thirty-two uh, bolt and nut. Got that on there. It's good and secure. That way it won't loosen up going down the road with the lock nut. I've got uh, blinkers coming that have the same grill as the headlight. I've got a side mount tail light and uh, 
license plate bracket they're going to mount back here they also have the tail light has the same grill as the blinkers and the headlights so it'll all tie in um so that's where we're at right now i'm going to get that seat mounted on there get the handlebars back on it 7 8 ones i'm going to get these footboards taken care of and i'm waiting for the shocks and what is the blinkers coming in the mail so next time we see each other i hope to have all that mocked up and in place um i'm going to try and get the fender that i was wanting for the rear of this and uh, see if i can't get that on there and mod you know i'm probably gonna have to modify it a little bit to get it on there but that's all good that's what customizing's about so that's where we're at that's where we're going i can turn this way okay we'll see everybody later again be safe be kind to each other live life behind bars next time you see this it'll look a whole lot different yeah buddy pat here from west corners custom cycles again welcome back to the under, underground garage uh, i told you i'd come back with this 94 virago when i got everything back on it I'm gonna take a walk around show you everything on it uh then i'm gonna get some stuff out to paint and we'll go from there all right here's the bike okay i decided to go with these bars the one inch bars that i explained to you in the last video i believe how that was working out and that if you want to do it the cheap way to go with the seven h bars i'm probably going to wind up keeping this bike i have two of them one of them i was going to keep one of them i'm going to get rid of that's the other one so that's the one probably going to be going down the road when i'm done with that one but that's why i decided to go with these bars it's not going to be cheap for you who want to know risers were 50 bucks handlebars were a hundred dollars new controls for the one inch bars that covers levers perches electronics controls um and handle grips uh were a kit on amazon for 75 dollars then the cables i have to have custom cables made uh there's a company out in california called motion pro and i have to have the cables made so that on this end they fit the yamaha virago and on the handlebar end they fit the harley davidson because those are the controls that are going to be going on there uh those custom cables are going to be around 300 dollars, maybe a little more with shipping tax and uh, custom work okay as far as the lights go i told you last time i was getting blinkers that match the headlight there's one of the blinkers see they all got the same grill ones on the back of the bike also have the same grill so does the uh tail light license plate holder um this is the fender that i told you came to me and it was damaged the company called me told me to dispose of the fender so i got out my hammer and fixed it best i could and got it on here and this is what it's looking like um as far as this rear part of the the frame goes every video i see somebody's hacking this off i don't know why you guys don't put a fender on it put a passenger seat on it have your old lady go for a ride with you this part in the back here going across i made that i had to cut this chunk on the floor out of there it was kind of flimsy and not exactly straight so i made that bolted it into the frame up here where it originally bolted and again i made this plate made this bracket for the spring seat that's all on there that'll stay on there permanent uh, i finally got the footboards on there i extended the shifter with a wrench i had don't know how happy i am with that i might wind up changing that and just making a whole new shifter but we'll see how that goes um as you can see i can get my foot on there and under it and over it to, to shift do what i gotta do same thing on the other side with the footboard on this side I had to extend the brake pedal uh, just at the beginning of the footboard here I extended it three inches brought it up exactly where I needed it I can get my foot on there I can shift up on it or you know get my foot up onto the brake when I need to and it's out of the way when I'm riding this is not the tank that's going to be going on this bike the 1000 and the 700 or the 1100 and the 750 tanks are not the same this tank is often 1100 
and these are the colors I'm going to have. I've got the paint for that. I got the side covers. They came yesterday, so tank side covers and rear fender are all going in that paint. And I think that's about all I can think of that I'm telling you right now. Um, yeah, right after I get done with this video, I'm pulling that fender and taking everything over to the paint guy, and then I'm going up to the upholstery guy. Uh, I got to get the passenger seat and the driver's seat redone together so they're the same. One's black and one's brown. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do them both in distressed brown leather. Sorry about the glare. It's uh, February, just a day or two after Groundhog's Day here in New York. And it's like a whiteout outside, and you can't see very well. There's a bunch of, we got about two feet of snow out there. But that's where we're at. All right. Just wanted to bring you up to speed. As always, you guys be safe, be kind to each other. Live life behind bars. See you soon. Okay, everybody. Pat here from West Corners Custom Cycles. Getting ready to do a wrap-up video on this 94 Yamaha Virago I've been working on. Um, there's several other previous videos to this. This is the wrap-up, show you everything I've done, how it turned out. And uh, so, with no further ado, let's see what how it looks. This is everything I took off the bike. Okay. Everything here on this blanket came off the bike some of it was replaced some of it was just completely left off these cylindrical things here the dirty rusty things are the baffles that I drilled out of the exhaust all right well let's look at the bike this is the bike So it turned out. Back, get a look at it. Go right from front to back, show you what I did. On the front, we got new rotors. Uh, obviously, went with different rims. It had five spoke uh, mag rims on it. I like the spoke look better, so I went with those. Uh, new bearings in the rim. Pulled, pulled the lower fork legs, painted them black. Uh, put a tool bag on it, put a grill on the headlight, got uh, turn signals to match it, went with ape hanger handlebars. These are 10 inch handlebars. If you go any higher on a Virago, you're going to have to extend stuff. This is the highest handlebars I could put on it without extending cables and electric. The only thing I actually had to extend was this brake cable right here. And I got one made. New tank color, same for the side covers and the rear fender. It was green previously. When I bought the bike, these side pods and the side covers here were missing. These uh, rear shocks are for a Honda Shadow. They're two and a half inches shorter than the original shock, so it dropped the bike, you know, squatted it that much more. On the rear exhaust, I drilled out the baffles. Uh, that chrome round ring in there is actually there's a piece of plumbing slit in there Goes to a kitchen sink. There's a video on YouTube already on how to do that I didn't make a video on how to do it because there was a gentleman that already had a video on how to do it out there If you want you can look it up and learn how Okay, put footboards on it put highway pegs on it had to extend the uh, brake lever three inches That's a backrest off a of Harley Davidson. Made the bracket for it. This whole black bracket here. Again, with the grill for the blinkers and the tail light, matched the front and the headlight. New backrest, new rear seat, new front seat. Top of the front seat to the road is 23 and a half inches. This thing is just slammed down. It is actually really cool and comfortable to ride. There it is, folks. Look back and get a look at it. 
I like it. Yeah, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about it. Good, bad, or ugly. Let me know if I'm doing anything good. All right. Well, it's 110 in the shade here, so I'm going to bid you adieu. As always, live life behind bars and keep the shiny side up. All right. Peace out.